All right, so uh, I'm James Crawford, and this is my presentation on uh, external data and importing the United States. So I'd like to start with the obvious. If you ever zoom out on the OpenStreetMap map of the United States in the last year or so, you may have noticed that the state of Florida has progressively been getting uh, a little greener in the peninsula. And that's been the result of the Florida land use import, which I've been uh, conducting solo for most of it, but now I've got uh, someone working with me. I'll talk about that. But uh, this is just um, one of several imports that I've started to manage after uh, another user who edits OpenStreetMap um, was, was abandoning these projects. They, they would uh, upload and then they would not um, go through the complete process. And so I would come in and I would take over and I would make sure that they would get done and get done right. So the Florida, I don't know, I've come up with a, a process to do the Florida data and I'd like to cover on that. It's uh, main, there's three main things, but uh, conflation takes up most of my time, just figuring out how to work the data in with what's already on OpenStreetMap. And then I use the two tools, uh, QGIS and JASM, to uh, run my whole process of getting that inflation done and getting the data on up the sheet now. So with conflation, um, I normally start by downloading all the land use and natural objects that are in the county that I'm working on. I work on county by county. And I'll load uh, all natural and all land use objects. And then I'll go through each object and I'll determine um, what objects I can delete and what objects may be modified to uh, help me. And so here's uh, three examples I've got. On the left, I've got um, a wetland. And this wetland on OpenStreetMap has no tags. It's just um, drawn as a wetland. And uh, an object like this, it's not okay geometry, but it's not very specific. You can see like on the top that it's kind of overlapping on that farm. And an object like this, um, I would choose to delete since deleting it doesn't really um, provide any metadata loss. And I could add my own data on top of it that could be of equal or higher quality. And then there's an then I've entered the objects like this second object, which is a large lake that has very detailed geometry and a name, and also some other tags from the NHD or yeah National Hydrology Dataset. And it, an object like this, I can't really delete because there's no real process that I have for transferring names or any object like that onto the import. But I do have tools for dealing with the objects that I don't delete. And then there's other cases with um, with businesses such as this uh, gas station, which is tagged on a land use object. Um, it's with businesses on OpenSheet map, you could tag them either like on a building or on a, a node. And it's also technically not wrong to put them on land use, but, it, but I, I transfer them to a node, which is more easy to process by, uh, engines that are trying to query those types of objects. And it makes it easier for me because then I can delete the land use object and replace it with the import data without losing too much quality. And so the next thing I do, once I've done all that sort of processing, which takes a lot of time is I load it into QGIS and I use the tools available in QGIS, such as um, buffer and difference, and as well as um, flip and lines to polygons. And these are all really useful geometry tools that you can use to process data that you have. So I'll load in my file and then I'll create a buffer around like the land use data I've loaded, for example. And then I will use the difference tool to subtract that from what the land use file that was provided to me by the external data. And I will uh, then have data that would be already conflated to street map without having to do any sort of manual review of saying, I need to unglue these and pull these out so that I can separate this land use object that is already on street map. And yeah, I do this also for roads. If there's a road, I, I draw, I use the buffer tool to buffer the road. And so I can create automatically a boundary around the road so that the land use object doesn't fall on the road or, um, or any overlap like that. And that generally makes it cleaner in areas like cities where, um, Lots of roads can cause a problem if, if land use are starting to overlap on the boundary of the road, and then it becomes really messy for other editors to edit that area. And then once I've done all my QGIS work, I save it into my computer, and then I open it in JASM. And in JASM has these two very powerful tools. There's the validator, which you can run, and it will find all sorts of errors with your data file. And so I run the validator, and I'll find these like random geometry errors that came out of QGIS. And so I'll just go through the validator, and I'll fix every single issue. There's generally only like a hundred or so. It's not too big of a deal. And once all that's done, I use the search tool to find some more like specific cases to how I do my process, such as, um, with cemeteries, since most cemeteries that are already on OpenStreetMap already have names, I don't delete those. And so therefore I have to purge those from my land use file. But sometimes that leads to cases where um, the existing cemetery boundary doesn't fully overlap what was in the land use import. 
And so I have to go in and find all the cemeteries that are in the land use import. And then I have to make sure that there's not, it's not some weird clipping issue regarding the data that was already on OpenStreetMap and then I'll have to delete it or, or save it depending on what I see. And um, I described the whole full process in detail. There's a lot more than just these two things that I do and it's all on the wiki page. The Florida Land Use Import is the only import I'm working on. The other import that I mainly work on is the HIFLD, but so far I've only really gotten documentation done for this import. It's a very extensive data set of all sorts of um, government facilities and uh, government interests like trails or um, libraries, just things like that. And uh, I made a doc, like a whole uh, wiki page with separate um, sections for each one. And, and I plan to write you know, instructions for each individual data set and getting those done as a separate process since they all have sometimes different storage schemes and also they need completely different tagging depending on what it is when you add the open stream map. And then I'd also like to mention these other three data sets that I've seen and also worked on in the past. There's the National Address Database, which is something a lot of you may have heard of. It's a recent project by the Department of Transportation, National Department of Transportation, to save all addresses in, in a uh, unified format so that um, anyone can access it, um, since that's not been a thing that's existed in the past and is very useful. And then, then it's not full coverage nationwide, but it, it is has, has a lot of coverage over many states, and it's available in the public domain. So on OpenStreetMap, Map, we're allowed to use it through our editors, such as uh, Rapid and uh, Map with AI. And then PASDA is a, a regional agency in Pennsylvania that has uh, all sorts of data. From, um, I've seen raster land use. I haven't really dug into it much, but I think they also have like address data and business programs as well. And then there's the Bureau of uh, Ocean Energy Management. I think, and that's hosted on uh, this website. And it has data about um, protected areas in, in uh, the coastline of the United States, as well as things like oil operations. I've already um, conducted an import in the past of uh, offshore oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico, um, operational ones, of course. And uh, this that's where it comes from. And uh, it's very useful resource as well, and, and also needs to be looked at. And the, the point I wanna say is that I'm just one person. And the HIFLD alone has over um, 100,000, 200,000 more uh, objects that need work. And a lot of it is kind of a manual review thing, but it is really, really used to data. And, uh, you know, I've, I've got, there's people that have worked on in the past, such as um, William, who's in this room. And, uh, and I'm really thankful for the help that I've received and any help that will come in the future, as well as the National Address Database, which has been a sort of a nationwide effort as well. And so one thing I did want to cover were the import guidelines, which I'm sure if you've ever tried to dabble in importing and you've seen before, they're very, um, it's very useful to have this since it is, it does provide guidance to all our importers and it's, and it's very specific, but there are a couple problems that I did want to mention with it. And, uh, I'll go through those now. So first I want to discuss that there's this, um, this sort of thing that's sort of taking up now is, is using change set tags instead of tags on an object. We're moving away from tagging like source equals the data set that you got it from on every object that you add to OpenStreetMap, map. And we're moving more towards uh, adding the source tag of the data set to your change set, which makes it easier if you're just trying to find the history of the object, you can just go to the first, first, first edition and then just click on the user. And then you can see exactly where it came from. But um, there's really no consensus for this yet on the import guidelines. There's no guidance on like what tags to use or how to use them. And so this is a screenshot from the imports mailing list where this user, uh, Mark, username Mark Mark, uh, has this, uh, this guide he's providing to another prospective importer where he's saying he should use these tags such as import, yes, website, and then the wiki page, and source, and source URL, but there's no documentation to back him up on this. He's just telling them to do this without any real guidance on what he should be doing. And this is only, for example, not really what he should be doing. And so I think that's something we do need to address in the near future. And then there's another problem I've noticed, and this is, a problem you may have seen if you look on the OpenStreet Map with them very frequently is that there's not a lot of um, very concrete language. Sometimes it's very useful to have a sort of, you know, ambiguous meaning if you're trying to like widen the definition of an object, but sometimes you really do need like a, an absolute definition with something like the import guidelines, especially where you want it to be very clear, very concise guidance. And so this is the first sentence on the import guidelines where it uses the word shall, which is very defining, very yes. And then there's another sentence, which is a little bit down on the page about wiki, about writing a wiki page for you and for it. And, uh, and it just uses, please, and he's like, please do it. But it, but it is, but it is a required step to have a wiki page for your import. And so if, if we want to move forward, we need to fix these kind of issues as well. 
And there's another issue I wanted to bring up is that um, if you've ever noticed, the mailing lists are kind of an old technology. And now well, this very new thing that has come around is the OpenStreetMap Community Forum. And uh, this OpenStreetMap Community Forum is very useful. It's, it's based on our discourse. And it's, I've, I've, I've had a lot of success with it, seeing what other people have discussed. And it's very, it's a lot more accessible than the mailing list, especially for newer users who aren't familiar with that sort of technology. And you can ease, and it's a lot easier to track like the discussion of an import because it's all in a thread and it and doesn't get confused with, you know, response threads written out on the email or not written out on the email. And so uh, I, I, I definitely think this is also something that needs to be considered going forward. And so here's a screenshot from two wiki pages that the, this is on the left is uh, the Florida Land Use Import, and on the right is the HIFLD. And the point I wanted to make with this page is that it's very important to keep your documentation up to date when you're uh, editing an import. I've had a lot of uh, things that I've discovered that I do differently now and things that I've changed in my process. And I make sure that I go back in and I, and I change the, the instructions to reflect that or um, you know, update something that's, that's changed over time. And I think it's very important that, um, and it's, it's, it's very useful for me to keep in touch with people, you know, so I can show them what I'm doing right now and they can always see in the history of what, what has been in the past. And it's always good to keep your documentation up to date and accurate. So I wanted to mention some people I've worked with, of course, uh, William, and then um, on the HIF buddy and the hospitals. And then there's uh, various, many, many editors who have worked on this, uh, this particular data set, the HIFLD electric power transmission lines, as well as the national address database. But these uh, power transmission lines, it's a, it's a full data set of all like actually important transmission lines in the United States. And it's very useful as a reference as like a backlit drop for uh, adding data. And many people have worked with that, I've seen. And then there's my really good friend, Lost Lost, who I've uh, personally trained with the Florida Land Use Import. And spending six hours on call with someone explaining your exact process in fully detail really does make it really clear what things you've missed in your instructions. So teaching him, I have added like four or five steps to my instructions as well. And that's all I've got.